this is part two and the final part of the last chance gas station which is a scratch build made entirely from cardboard and some XPS foam for the base. I've made a few XPS foam pieces such as the ice machine and a vending machine and the little petrol bowsers out of uh, you know, XPS foam as well and for those videos I will leave links in the box below. This is a nice easy thing to build and I know I do say that about everything but the stuff I build is so rudimentary it's wonderfully easy so I hope you get something out of this and I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to literally pick up where I left off from the last video and take my pieces off so I can just measure around where I want to permanently place the actual gas station. I'm just going to mark around the corners, the major areas. I don't need to draw an entire line around it, but I just want to mark where it needs to sit. And that way I can uh, place my floor. I'm just using some board out of back of um, a picture frame and just cut it loosely. I do not want it to be snug because I want to be able to lift this building on and off the diorama whenever I like so I can alter the interior. I just made a little cut there for the door which is a jar and then I'm going to just glue it down once I've put the tiling on. I gave it a quick sp um, spray of black matte just to kind of seal it and it fits nice and easily. I've printed out some what seemed to me suitable tiling for a floor like this which is grungy and gross. There was something up with the pattern of this so I had to really fiddle with it. That's what you get when you print things out for free but uh, you can figure it out by fixing it later. I glued it down best I could and then dirtied around the edges and then down the centre where I'm going to put some shelving I just use a black brown watered down wash as well just so I can make a filthy strip where it would be all built up around the base of the shelving. The reason I do this is because it just gives a three-dimensional look because it, you're making a shadow. Everything's about shadow and light so that's my reasoning. <laughs> It's rough but it looks good and just a pencil to kind of draw in more shadow or what would look like a missing tile or filth around the tile, whatever have you. It's about fooling the eye so it doesn't have to be anything completely rational, just something that, you know, looks grubby. These are made from decals on some dirtied up balsa wood. I just printed them out and I flip sided them so there's one on one side one on the other so when you're looking through the windows there's not a pattern of even looking shells with products on them. Once again more trickery. I glued them down after poking a couple of holes in with uh, some thick water based glue. They look good through the windows when you're peering through the windows the eye does not think oh there's something wrong with them they're, they're, they're not the right um, depth or width they look quite good i like them a lot it's so hard to film inside this because it's so small but as you can see when you look at the floor and you look at the shelves the dimensions work because they're realistic printouts not you know like a, an animated printout so the shadow on its own simply because it's a real printout of an image or the image of something real well, you know what I mean I'm sure it works well I'm going to put some more pictures on the inside sort of like posters and that sort of thing covering up some ugly parts of the building distracting and filling up empty void and the supports that I put in when I first made it because the cardboard was flimsy when I was working with it so I'm just using some thin cardboard just to support them and then it'll give them a little depth as well and then I just glue them down these are kind of all vintage things to go with the theme and there's the vending machine without a sewing machine in it oh, I should have left it in there it probably would have been an interesting point and there it's nicely sitting in permanently glued down and time for some soil 
It's just soil from my garden that I bake in the oven to kill any bacteria. I put down lots of glue. I'm really just joining or concealing the lines in the, in the foam that uh, I used on the base. This is the runniest PVA glue I have ever used. Uh, someone's watered that down and they're making a buck on the side, I'm sure. <laughs> it's so runny. But uh, I put heaps of it down and then I just liberally sprinkled the soil everywhere once that was done. Once again, looks like I'm sprinkling something on a cake. I don't know. Why does everything look like food when I make it? It's probably just me. I didn't use huge amounts because the base was already brand the way I'd already painted it, but uh, enough to make, you know, texture. And then I lightened it up with, uh, you can see this sort of an orange, brown, yellow ochre and some cream because I'm going to start trying making depth because there isn't a great amount of depth with this flat soil I've put on. So I'll make the illusion of depth by lightening it in sections so, like where the um, cars would run in. And then there would be that section that goes underneath the vehicle, which is a little raised or a little deeper, or it's got you know oil stains, that sort of thing. I am trying to sound logical, but uh, it made sense when I was doing this because everything I do, I make up as I go, and it seems to work until I start explaining it, and that doesn't make so much sense. But it um, it looks good enough to be believable so I just lightened it up and then I lightened it again I just um, put a, you know, a brown and a, a white together because I just want to this time really kind of dry brush it I really want to just to pull that little bit of light on top of the little sandy bits of soil that I've put down just to give it a little that little pull it just brings it up and as you can see it's not about making it lighter and pulling it up maybe it's also about where it's the darker areas are it brings them back down and that makes depth it's a, almost an opposite effect I paint a lot of things instead of buying different products and using them I use something and just paint it I find it works I made um, this little vintage sign out of, well, using a decal that I printed out again. I made some discs out of polymer clay. They look a bit funny, but I'm not much of an expert with polymer clay. I, I utilize it the best I can because it's so functional. But I just made these with a little bit of a skewer as well for the whole, the whole little piece. I made a perfect sphere it was the best I could get it to be a, a perfect sphere and then I find with practicing what I, you do is cover it with paper so it won't stick leave it on the foil for the oven and then put a very round perfect container over it and put it in the center so when you apply pressure it will evenly push outwards and make a circle in the way you want it there's a whole thing going on here to make a perfect circle but um, that's the best way I can find to do it without stuffing it up over and over and over. I use a pen just to make a little hole. These pens are good because they pop the middle out as well. I have to patent that one. <laughs> and the sign piece itself, I just pressed it down a little longer, a little harder and it came out as a thinner disc. I just give them a very rough paint with my fingers like I do with most things because I don't want it to be perfect, I want it to look old. And I want it to look, you know, natural. And that's that done. Put the decal on. Very thick glue, water-based glue. I, I love this glue. It's very good stuff. It's just the thickness of it. it uh, everything adheres so beautifully. It's quite seamless and it dries so clear. I'm, I'm not advertising. <laughs> There's no brand involved, but this is a good glue. Any very, very thick water-based glue you can get is super good. Just make sure you push any uh, little lumps and bumps out of it. And go over the top of it. It, it will seal it so it's, um, it's waterproof. 
some tyres. I just found some old toys at thrift stores and, um, um, yeah, I popped the centres out of them and cut them to bits and I just wanted the actual tyre itself because of the tread. I couldn't figure out a way to make a good tyre with tread that wasn't so laboriously painstaking that I had to do this. And I just put a little bit of uh, grey dry brushing on them looks a bit heavy but when you dirty them up that uh, falls away again and it gets rid of that plastic shine that you don't want especially if they're old tires more decals just for signs and these little numb plates where I thought would be a really good idea and I put them onto some tissue box and um, it's uh, it's the thickness I, I go by thickness with cardboard depending on what the object I, I would like to be in depth and sizes. Tissue box cardboard is great for a lot of things, you know, magazines and newspapers and that sort of thing. This sign is made with tissue box and another thin cardboard and a little skewer that's been done with ink and then silver and then cut out with scissors. It's super basic. I stained and painted the back of this when I was done with it and these little signs as well just the right thickness it's not tissue box it's a little thicker you'll find with signs and things or whatever you're making the bigger it is if it's thin cardboard it'll bow so you need to be wary of how thick it is for the size of the object little tiny ciggy cartons and you can see the, the, the thickness of that. If you're making a magazine or a newspaper, this kind of tissue box paper is actually really perfect for it. It will look like pages if you actually get that close to it. Time to assemble it all now. It's the uh, ice machine from the last video. It looks quite good, I don't mind it. And that little, looks like a popsicle. <gasps> My lollipop. I'm gonna clean up the edges with this, um, some brown ink but um yeah looks good I, I like the uh, the wording on it it's a nice little sign the dunny that I made a million years ago in one of my old videos I'll chuck a link in for that it actually suits it really well and of course once again it's the same scale so fill the void more of these little signs I just put them everywhere because some um, one of my um, viewers another youtuber from Campaign Terrain gave me lots of great ideas for this. Being an American, he would know an awful lot more about this than I do. And he's got a great creative mind as well, which is really lovely. And the tyres. I just sort of put them here, there and everywhere on the roof just to uh, look like it's holding down a bit of the corrugated iron some of these plants that I made or bushes from um, older videos as well just they're nice fillers and they're spindly and and dry and I don't know there's something nice about these little bushes they really they fill spaces in a very soft way plus they look natural too I'm glad that glue dries clear. It'd look shocking if it didn't. More decals on the back. And just go over the outside of them so it just it seals them. And then I can put a nice brown wash on them. And they'll never come off. Not while I'm alive anyway. <gasps> Don't hold me to it. Just run along the, uh, the bits of the wood just put it down nicely I put down a little bit of static grass sort of here and there it was very sporadic very sort of spindly I just wanted the contrast and the color and the, it's a little natural which is nice more of these grasses a little tumbleweed would have been good I wonder how I could make one of those little pile of debris out the back bits of stuff I was gonna make it like a little I don't know it was like a gazebo-y kind of thing that would have been for tires and stuff but I didn't have the space so 
I found these and thought, oh, I'll, I'll chuck them on. <laughs> so I did. And they fill the space out the back. So, yeah, they look good. I didn't spend too much time deciding how perfect it would be. I find sometimes let things fall naturally and they kind of, I don't know, they, they look more natural. I know it sounds over logical but um, it just works that way just yeah, you know, let it go I ended up putting a very small shadow around this with a black felt tip pen make sure it's of course uh, water based not a fuel based pen or you'll dissolve that foam my little sign and time for the brown wash <laughs> my favourite bit this is my um, opportunity to tie everything together, anchor everything down, make it all connected as one piece. It makes shadows, it makes dirt, it just does everything. It's um, a magical thing about making a diorama. Every piece becomes one. There's little tiny bits of grass in the middle of the road there, you can barely see them. I'm just using the wash as well to make more sort of like oil stains. I probably should have um, darkened this a little and made it more of a, a few speckles of a black stain. But I wouldn't use black, maybe a blue-black stain. Just for really uh, stark oil stains. As you can see it bleeding out, which becomes super naturally wonderful looking. Super natural, no. Very natural looking. <laughs> Shadow under the tyre and around everything i do this on everything around the outside of these little tiny signs it's like dirt build up and shadow and you know as i always say it's about fooling the eye this is the illusion and uh it stops everything looking new you can't see you know cut marks and all the things that you did creating it are disguised by doing this I love those little number plates, they look great. Really great idea. Thank you, Campaign Drain. And on these, I hadn't, uh, hadn't dirtied them up enough. Around the ice machine. You have to remember when you do this too, it, it will soak into everything. So when you put it on and you think, oh God, it's so dark. And you have that first moment of, oh no, I've ruined it. It will dry and you can do this two or three times easily. And um, and then it will turn out just how you want it. So uh, don't freak out when you first go using a wash like this. It will dissipate. I think that's one of the things I love about it because it's so uncomplicated. You have great control over how much depth and shadow and light and uh, moisture and all these wonderful things that you have with this sort of thing. I'm starting to feel like a one trick pony, <laughs> but I do love this and I, I hope other people really uh, utilize this technique. It, it's a wonderful thing. As you can see, I put it everywhere. I just under everything, around everything, not on everything, but you know, anywhere that uh, shadow might hit, soften the edges of every little thing. I think this brown wash is probably the artistic version of what concealer is to a woman's face <laughs> now i really look at it and think about it, it it's uh, it's definitely a cover up but it works well this is it out in the sunlight look oh, like back at that car <laughs> looks filthy whoops but um it looks beautiful it really uh, it photographs really well i wish i was better with the photography but um this is what you get. I'm, I'm sorry if it's uh, not a good enough view. I, I did try to get inside it, but I really struggle because it's so small. 
but it looks lovely and it looks nice and realistic which I really like and there's also some shots of it um, at night time so you get to see how it looks in the dark and how it looks internally in the dark so hopefully you get a good enough view to see what I've done and what you can do when you have a go at it I really do hope that um, you got something out of this and I hope to see you next time <laughs>